Banjo Kazooie was released on the Nintendo 64 over 21 years ago. He is now a man and is the 10th best selling Nintendo 64 game of all time. The game was a huge success and was praised by most critics, including myself. I mean, I love the game. Hell, why not? Banjo took what worked with Mario 64 and expanded upon the 3D platformer formula and made a name for itself among fans at the time. We were all looking for something awesome to play, and this was definitely it. A couple years later, we got a sequel to the game titled Banjo Tooie, which improved upon the first game in many regards, but also ramped up the difficulty quite a bit. Little kids were screaming everywhere, they couldn't handle it, but it was still an awesome game. Beautiful looking. The sequel was also a big success at that time as well, but just two years after the sequel released, the company who developed the Banjo games, Rare, was acquired by Microsoft. Holy crap. All hope was lost for fans of Nintendo's consoles and handhelds to ever see Banjo again. But that all changed a week before Banjo's 21st birthday at E3 this year. Microsoft, they've been seen as being a bit friendly with Nintendo as of late, you know, rubbing shoulders and whatnot. And this friendship paid off when Banjo and Kazooie was announced for Smash Ultimate. People were shocked, excited, overjoyed. They loved seeing that their beloved character was back on a Nintendo console. Who knows what the future could hold? Maybe remasters of the original games released on the Nintendo Switch? Rare replay getting a Switch port? I don't know. Who knows for sure, but what I do know is there are some skilled ass people out there who are fans of these franchises and love to celebrate that. Today, my friends, today, we're gonna take a look at a brand new Banjo-Kazooie game for the Nintendo 64 that I think a lot of you will be excited to check out. From creator Kirko Mods, Marcus Kirko comes Banjo-Kazooie the Bear Waker. What? A new game that combines The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker with Banjo-Kazooie with some awesome results. The game is playable on both original hardware via an EverDrive or can be emulated with some awesome ass results on your PC. I was blown away seeing the, the results of emulation of this game. It looks beautiful. Today, though, we are going to play a little bit of the game on my Ultra HDMI modded Nintendo 64. Let's just kind of get a feel for it, see what it looks like, share it with you guys. I will also put a link for you guys to download this game. So I'll be linking you directly to Kirko Mods so you can grab the link from him. But yes, this game is pretty darn sweet looking. So let's go ahead and check it out. So here we go, my friends. We have the EverDrive booted up, ready to go. We've got so much content for the Nintendo 64 coming up. We will be doing our review of the Super 64 pretty soon, but right now we are using the Ultra HDMI modded system. I'm using my refurbished Kitchbent controller. We just did a video on that, so take a look at those things if you like. But this game, we're going to jump into in a second. So Kirko Mods, this guy's been working on a lot of things out there. He just recently did the Banjo-Kazooie Donkey Kong Country mod. And he also has a bigger game going on, The Legend of Banjo-Kazooie, The Jiggies of Time, which is a crossover of Banjo-Kazooie and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. So this game, it's a pretty big one, man. 64 megabytes was the download size. Let's go ahead and boot her up. BK Burger King, The Bear Waker, Banjo-Kazooie. Not Burger King. Let's get into it. So, obviously, this is a crossover of The Wind Waker. And we're going to be an Outset Island. It's the only playable area, but there's a lot of little unlockable other areas within that. But it's the main play area. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into that. There's no real, like, intro screen right here. It just goes into the save file select from what I've seen. But here we go. Look at this, Kazooie. New mod in sight. <laughs> I, I really dig the way this looks. It does look a hell of a lot better on emulation, not gonna lie. Hey, we're waiting, waiting for Link to go in search of his sister and defeat the evil Ganondorf, but I haven't seen him anywhere. So I guess we gotta go find Link, right? The door of his house is locked with key. What? <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump into this a little bit, see what we could do. I played it for a couple minutes before recording this. 
Uh, but like I said, emulating this and like Project 64 uh, done properly looks like a new game, like could be released on the, the Nintendo Switch from the way it looks to me. But playing it on the original Nintendo 64 is really awesome as well. Um, the only thing I do notice, and I've seen this in screenshots too, is this like texture underneath his feet. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but you know, it is what it is. Doesn't just detract from the game too much in my opinion. Um, but here we go. Pretty awesome. I love how everything does have that kind of that Wind Waker look to it. I would love to see just the Wind Waker redone for the, you know, demastered for the Nintendo 64. That would be pretty interesting. But, you know, hey, we'll have to wait and see. Who knows what everybody's working on out there. There's always these crazy projects that not everybody uh, hears about that comes to fruition. I've, I heard about this one a while ago. I um, kind of was keeping tabs on it a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it was just released today as of my filming of this video. So let's go ahead and check this out a little bit. Let's beat these guys up. Explore a little bit. Come on, fool. Like, the draw distances are supposed to be a heck of a lot better. It can get a little sluggish um, playing on original hardware. So I definitely, you know, if you have a Nintendo 64 and you don't have an EverDrive... I probably wouldn't buy an EverDrive just to play this game. Um, from what I've seen so far, it's not a huge game. It's more of a to hold people over until his uh, Ocarina of Time crossover gets done. So, but it's still pretty cool. You know, it's something to mess around with. Has a lot going for it. Get out of here, fool. Oh, shit. Okay, well, I see a treasure chest all the way out there. I wonder how we get out that way. Oh, right here. Duh. But yeah, let's just play this a little bit. See what it looks like. I like how the, you know, the water is not a, you know, wave race looking water. It's it's got that uh, that animated style, that Wind Waker looking water. So that's definitely pretty cool. It does come out, you know, everything does look pretty sharp on the, the the Ultra HDMI Nintendo 64. You know, you can't really get too much magic going on here. Come on, open. How do we open this? Come on, bitch. Oh well, whatever. Let's go explore a little more. <laughs> but yeah, I'm always I'm always digging these kind of things, these ROM hacks, these mods, these these whole new projects. Not you know, I think they're neat when people do stuff like this and essentially make a whole new game. A lot of people love Banjo Kazooie, and there hasn't been any love for it on Nintendo consoles in a long time. So to play this on a Nintendo 64 is pretty, pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. From what I understand, there is one bug where like the music notes, shit. The music notes, if you die, how many ever you collected, it doesn't save the number, but it doesn't affect gameplay. Uh, and I did notice that the one time I died when I first played the game, but not a, not a big deal, especially since it doesn't affect the gameplay. There we go. We just explore Outset Island. It has its own rendition of the music from the original game, the Outset Island theme. So that's pretty cool. I don't know where I'm going here, but let's let's do it. Go up this way. Collect some more notes. Oh, and we could smash pots. Boom. Hell's yes. I think you're supposed to be able to unlock some of these doors. Oh, that thing's just gonna jack me up, man. Maybe we should just try to get across over here. There we go. Let's do it. Don't drown, Banjo. Come on. Pretty awesome. If you're, you know, the Wind Waker is the one game in the Zelda franchise that I'm probably the least familiar with. Um, I did play through the game when it originally released, but it, it's like the only Zelda game 
um, that I just I kind of blasted through and I didn't re I'd never played it again I never went back to it and it was it was an okay game now I take that back the uh, like spirit tracks uh, the ones for the DS I never really got into those but as far as main console releases the Wind Waker was the game I did finish but it didn't really hold a lasting impression on me for some reason so I never never revisited it I'm not saying it's a bad game it's just for whatever reason maybe the time that it came out things going on in my life it didn't um didn't really strike me as one of the best of the series at the time i don't know you know maybe there's a pretty large fan base of wind waker fans out there i don't know son of a bitch did you see that what did, what did we just demolish there <laughs> well, I just wanted to kind of give you a little look at the game. Um, easy to get into. Just grab the download. Like I said, I'll have a link in the description so you could take a look. Grab it while it's available. You never know. It's not an IPS patch or anything. It's 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 like a full release. So you don't have to patch anything. So that kind of worries me a little bit that maybe this file won't be out there for long. But once it's out there, it, a couple people grab it. It's all over the place. But hey, grab it if you can, check it out, emulate it, put it on the EverDrive, do whatever you got to do, enjoy it. Let me know what you think. I'm going to try to play this a little more. Just wanted to give you a little look. So really do appreciate you guys. Got a lot of Nintendo 64 content coming up. And with that said, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye. It's freaking hot today, guys.